What's going on you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here and welcome back to it's not a tea talk but it's gonna be more of a story time because today you're still gonna be getting Ori in the Blind Forest as your second video of the day but this is just me changing up the pace of things a bit. I want to be able to see how you guys react to me doing more of a story time thing because I've seen a lot of people doing oh my first concert experience. I'm like kind of want to take a stab at that because I had a very interesting first concert experience. <laughs> I was 17 years old and I'm gonna back up a little bit so you guys get the whole ambiance but I was going to see Alex Band. Now if you guys don't know who Alex Band is I'll put a link to some of his work in the description. He's an amazing musician. He is the lead singer of the band The Calling. I don't know if you guys remember the song back in like the early 2000s, Wherever You Will Go, Adrian, all that kind of stuff. That was his stuff. So yeah, he's one of my favorite singers, one of the first singers who actually personally told me that I should keep going with music. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But yeah, I actually got to meet him. I actually got to take a picture of him, which will be inserted. Yeah, see, I, I absolutely, I, I'm such a small bean back then, but I, yeah. It was it was it was a really amazing time. It was my first concert experience with my mom and with my friend who uh, for the purposes of privacy will remain nameless. I'll just call her Hey Girl Hey. I don't know how that's gonna be referenced throughout the video, but we'll make it work. So me, my mom, Hey Girl Hey's mom, and Hey Girl Hey were there. That's not gonna be good. Like, you know, we're just gonna roll with it. We're gonna roll with it. Um, we were all at the Highline Ballroom, which is where the concert was held out. If you guys don't know where that is, that's in Manhattan. It is a bougie place, but it's kind of low-key in a way. But whenever I went there, it was... I absolutely love Manhattan. Manhattan is like my second home. It's my home away from home. I've been going back and forth there ever since I was seven years old because my mom, you know, she used to work in Manhattan. She worked right near uh, the Trade Center actually when I was younger. And it was it's such a wonderful experience because whenever I go there, I would go to NYU, see her customers, go to Chinatown, see her customers, we would go to Canal Street. It was just an experience and a half. I absolutely love Manhattan. It's one of the, the one of the only places I think here on the uh, on the East Coast that I'm gonna miss whenever I move. But that's his story because I tend to get sidetracked whenever I talk about Manhattan. <laughs> so we were there. The concert started at about six, seven o'clock. So we got there about five thirty. I'm one of those people who gets there extra early. Like for Warped Tour, I was there like five hours early before it even started. For the band Him, I was there. I think about four or five hours early too whenever I saw it. Yeah, I am I am on time. I am persistently early whenever it comes to concerts, okay? So we got there really early and actually me and my mom were the first ones there. Uh Hey Girl Hey and her mom were not there I think until like five or ten minutes before the concert started. There was a line going out the door. Like there was a line. Like you do cocaine, there was a line. <laughs> It was really crazy because I thought it was just going to be a very intimate thing, but there were a lot of college kids there. And this was at an age where I still had eczema. I still had very, very bad self-esteem issues. So I tried to lose weight whenever I was 17. I would just slap myself in the face if I had to go back in time and just be like, why? No, you were skinny. You were like a stick back then. You did not need to lose weight. I mean, it was just, uh, I just want to slap myself back then. <laughs> So I get this entire getup already. I have like pleather leggings on with a t-shirt. No, yeah, it was like a flowy sh like purple shirt that had like a phoenix on it. You guys saw it in the picture. You, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, it was an interesting getup. I wore kind of like booty things. I thought I was on fleek, seriously. And yeah, I mean like it was great. I had my hair, my hair was so long back then that I didn't know what to do with it. So I kind of did it how I have it now except longer. And it was really just, it was a fun time. Like that was the first time I actually got to dress up for something that was really, really just fun and exciting and just like, I don't know. I don't know. It was just like one of the first times that I really felt in my zone because whenever I usually go to events and stuff like that, when I was a kid, it would just be for high school and I, you know, always hated it. But this is something like it was a graduation present from my mom. The tickets were like $12 and it was Alex Band's kind of like coming out as a solo artist thing. Now he is back together with The Calling and I was 
just really excited to get to see him as my first band. And the main thing that made me want to see him live was his song Tonight. And I will put a link to that in the description below. It is absolutely just a beautiful song. It was done back in 2010. I, I feel old just talking about it right now. <laughs> so we get in there, guys, and the Highland Ballroom, it's a bougie place. Like like I said before, it's bougie. Uh, whenever we were there, we, we were only, we were allowed to order, like, you know, cheese crackers. Like, it was, it was deluxe, like, let me tell you. But that was my life. That was what I was used to because at home, every night before we would have dinner at the nighttime, I would always tell my mom we would set out a plate of blue cheese goat cheese, Ritz, crackers, like all this kind of stuff. We would play foosball, we will play rugby, which is a card game. And we would just, I don't know, we would just sit down and watch Family Guy. It was, you know, for me, that was my life. That was what I was used to. So a lot of people are just like, oh my God, you must be so posh. I'm like, yeah, that's, I lived in a posh neighborhood. I grew up in a, you know, in a posh area of New Jersey. I live near Bill Gates, I believe. And it was really interesting to see people's reaction because it's like, I don't consider myself posh because of the way I act, I'm humble about myself and I'm humble about my surroundings and the company that I keep. So it's like, in a way, I know if I work hard for something, if I want to be bougie about it, I have the fucking right to be. That's why I get so irritated when people comment on other people's use of their own money. I'm like, it's their money. It's what they want to do with it. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Don't be a bitch anymore. Like, it's <laughs> a very fun Disney way to put it. That's, that's basically it. So, yeah, that's that's my long spiel of where we were at. Um, yeah, it was great. There was a stage right up in front of us, and it was really that. Like, the stage was just, oh my god, if I could perform on that stage. Girl, honey child. <laughs> that, that would be a dream come true. I've actually tried to apply for gigs at the Highland Ballroom. Highland Ballroom, if you're listening, hook a bitch up. Seriously, I'm in desperate need of some giggage. I miss performing so much. It would be an acoustic act only, so I mean, I don't know if they would get their money's worth, but hey. So yeah, we were there. The stage was, as I said, right up here. Um, back a little bit, you had um, velvet curtains. Well, not velvet curtains, like um, velvet rope things on each side. And then you had the stage in the middle and you had like the fangirls crowding there and it's funny because they were all there for the same purpose but they wouldn't talk to one another like they were there for seeing the same person and they wouldn't talk about the person that they were seeing they wouldn't converse swap fan stories all that kind of stuff it was just interesting to me and we were a little bit back there were a few tables for you know whenever you were sitting down and you didn't want to like dance the night away and everything like that and then you had the red room and the red room was where the vip section was and that was like not too far from where we were sitting we were like almost inside the red room area but we weren't that cool so me my mom hey girl hey's mom and hair girl hey we were like sitting right there and then we had the velvet rope and it was right next to us at the red room was and i was just like want to be in the red room so the night goes on we get there early and then the concert uh starts with their warm-up act as i like to call it and these guys were very loud as a musician i'm very nitpicky about the lo a lot of the music i do listen to anyway so whenever i hear someone good live it's very shocking to me who is like a warm-up act for the person who is the headliner now this warm-up act they must have been not that good because I can't remember the name of them anyway. So I remember their sound. I remember at first, since it was my very first concert, it was very loud. It was very loud. My ears were just not taking it well. Hey girl, hey, we're sitting right next to me and she had earbuds in. So, you know, that goes to show you how loud they were. And she was a little bit older than I was. She was, I think, like two years older than me at the time. And yeah, we were just sitting there. We were enjoying the music up to the point where he started screaming. And I like screamo music, but I have to understand the words that you're saying. And this guy didn't come off as a screamo singer. He came off more as an electronic Zed wannabe. And I was like, okay, if you're trying to sing clarity, yeah, but I need to hear what you're saying, dude. <laughs> so that was interesting nonetheless. They played, I think, five or six songs. Then we got to meet them, we got to do like a meet and greet with the band. I didn't get a picture with them because they were just handing out stuff and they didn't really take that many pictures with everyone, to be honest. So then it came time. And guys, 
Can I just tell you how excited I fucking was to see Alex Band in his glory. He was playing with uh, ARMS, which is his former guitar player. I don't know if they still perform together or not. I, had, I kept up with him to a certain extent um, at, when I was in college my freshman sophomore year, and I think they just divided off, but don't quote me on that. Look it up for yourselves. Don't take me as your only source. So he goes on the stage, and I shit you not, like, it was the best concert I've ever had. I've ever had an experience with, ever, my entire life. Like, besides, okay, it's Alex Band, then the band's him, and then, I think, uh, what was it? Bless the Fall. Because I remember going to see Bless the Fall. And I absolutely loved it. It was my favorite band. And then Warp Tour because Warp Tour sucked. Like, if you guys want to hear me talk about my story on Warp Tour, leave a comment down below because I will do a full on video about my fucking experience at Warp Tour because it was absolute shit. I. Okay. I understand Warp Tour to a certain extent. I was very hyped about it, but my experience with it, it's. It was a nightmare. So, if you want to hear about that, let me know down below. I'll tell you about that. So, I hear him playing and, like, it's interesting whenever you see a concert for the very first time, the feelings that go through you and how it resonates because he was singing and back then I was very gung ho about being a musician. I wanted to do it. I was ride or die about it. I was like, I'll be a starving artist. I don't care. And now it's like more or less I do music for myself because I love it and I don't want it to become a job because then if it becomes a job, I won't have any passion for it. It's different with YouTube. With YouTube, you know, I love expressing myself through gaming. I'm a game developer, so whenever I develop games, I keep in the mindset that, hey, this is something I love to do. I'd love to be able to have it as a job. And it's different because when you have a passion for something and you can have that passion for your work and make money from it and you don't lose that passion just because it's still your job, then you have something. But if you lose passion for it and it's still your job, then it's not gonna make you much happiness. So I decided, and this was a very, very rude wake-up call to myself that I couldn't have music as my job because I knew that I would hate it down the road because I, I hate being forced to do music. It's one thing about me. Like, if I can do music on my own terms, then that's one thing, but if I'm forced to write a song on the spot, if I'm forced to do something where I have to sing something a certain way, then I'm gonna hate it no matter what, and that's just my personality. So I hear him sing, and the stage lights go on, and I see him sing the song, Please, and I will uh, link you guys to his album in iTunes down below that I'm talking about, because it's absolutely a masterpiece, it's wonderful, you guys will absolutely love it. So yeah, whenever I did that, I was like, okay, you know, this, this is something I want to do. I love music, and I want to be able to do it for the rest of my life. Even if it's not my job, I want to do it. So that was basically my experience with seeing Alex Ben. After the concert, I ended up meeting him. He had a meet and greet. I told him that, you know, how do I become a musician like you? I would absolutely love to do music. And he was like, just keep being persistent at it. Keep going with it and, you know, have the right connections is the main thing that he was getting at. And it was interesting because we actually kept in touch a little bit after that. Uh, he had a few live streams and I had some of my questions answered, which was really, really cool. I ended up sending him an email saying, you know, I'm afraid that college isn't going to be right for me. What if I don't end up, you know, doing music and everything? He was just like, get your degree, do what you need to do with your life and music will fall into place when it's ready to fall into place, basically. And it was really cool getting an email back from him. Like, I was so ecstatic at the fact that he actually even took the time to talk with me and everything. And you know what? That's that's all a musician can do, really. I mean, like, that's why I answer back to every comment. I answer back to every email, every question I get on my, um, on my Facebook, on my Twitter, wherever it may be, because I want to take that time. I want to show people that I actually care and I'm not just out for money or whatever it may be on YouTube because that's the last thing I'm out for right now because it's like, I do this because I love it, not because I have to. And the last part of this video because uh, Liz just texted me, hi Liz, uh, that she's here. So yeah, I, I just enjoyed it. It was a thoroughly amazing experience. Hey girl, hey, didn't have such a good experience because um, she just didn't like the musician and she didn't like the concert, but that's okay. Beggars can't be choosers. But yeah, it was just really cool. 
I loved my first experience as you know in a concert as a whole and I really honestly if I could do it all over again I would do it all over again at this age more confident in myself and able to drink some wine but yes I would do it all over again so I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down in the comments below if you want me to talk about my warp tour experience about my hip experience any other concerts that I've been to and I definitely will so tight that like button happy living and let's do it all together shall we hipster fist it